Hey guys, this is Crispy990 here, and this is a review of my Super Knife Balisong. I got this at a local store. I live just east of Atlanta in Georgia, and uh, in Georgia there's a city called Conyers, and in Conyers there's a uh, store called ACC, which is short for Atlanta Cutlery Corporation. And when I uh, drove there, I, I was sort of shocked because it was a uh, castle, literally. It was just a massive building and sort of touched up to look like a castle um, with painted stone and uh, battlements on top and everything. When I walked in it was a relatively small store but turns out that ACC is just a fraction of the building and uh, most of the building is like a museum replica warehouse or you know, manufacturing something or other. Um, which is fitting because if you spend enough money in a store you can dress up like three musketeers with their swords, you can dress up like Braveheart with his sword you can dress up like uh, Assassin's Creed, you know, uh, Altair from Assassin's Creed with all his swords and his daggers and throwing knives and eventually they're going to have the uh, uh, little wrist dagger that comes out. Um, it's not going to be spring loaded but you know, still it will be pretty cool. And you know just various famous movie characters with famous weapons. Um, they had a mannequin dressed up like a 300 Spartan with, you know, real spear, real shield, real helmet, real sword, all that. Um, if you watch the Showtime series, The Tudors, they had several mannequins dressed up like that, like uh, Henry VIII and all that. Um, the walls were just lined with swords. It was amazing. And like battle axes and stuff. It was pretty cool. Um, they had everything from Kukri's to literally like the Braveheart sword. Like, uh, of course, Lord of the Rings swords are pretty popular, apparently. And up at the front, you know, in a small case, they had some knives. Not that many, I mean, compared to the swords. Um, the only real name brand stuff they had was Cold Steel. They had a lot of the Nightshade FGX series. And um, they had a tie light there that I think I'm going to get. Just a regular 4-inch Zytel tie light. Um, and I think it would be cool to get the uh, some of the Nightshade series. Get like a full-size Karambit for 5 bucks, and a full-size Taipan for 5 bucks. But for functionality, I think I'll just get the push knife since they're glass reinforced plastic, if you don't know. And uh, they have a good bit of, you know, puncture power, like, you know, stabbing power, but they don't really slash real well. Um, just kind of neat to have a plastic knife that works almost as well as a metal knife for stabbing power for five bucks. But anyway, um, mostly they had, like, no name brand sort of stuff, knockoffs and that sort of thing. Um, but when I went, they had one balisong, and that's it. Um, apparently, you can sell balisongs in Georgia legally. Um, and the automatic I bought in Georgia was sort of, you know, under the counter sort of thing almost. Um, sort of hole in the wall shop. But since they catalog their equipment in ACC, they've got to have legit stuff. But you can have a balisong in Georgia, but you can't carry it. And I'm pretty sure that's because of all the, you know, Filipino gang baggage that comes with it. Um, you know, since it's, I don't understand why, other than just the gang affiliations with it. Because it's much faster to open my assisted opening uh, Kershaw than it is to open this thing. Um, but anyway, here you go. It's a, uh, apparently the brand is Super Knife. If anybody has any hard back on, um, that brand name, uh, let me know, I'm just curious. But apparently that's where they order all their um, ballast songs. Got this for about five bucks because it was broken. I'm going to go back, uh, I think, like tomorrow. And that'll be about two weeks because he told me two weeks from the time I bought this um, that they'd have you know, new stock of ballast songs. And I can get a real one that works. Um, when I got this, the handles were falling apart, they were separating, and um, that's how the pin that holds the latch fell out and got lost, and that's why this has no latch. And actually, I had to duct tape the handles together. And when I got this, I had not yet gotten my T-Tool, which is the Kershaw T-Tool, and um, I've got to use it constantly on this thing to keep the hinges together. This has a T8 bit, a T6 bit, and a Phillips head bit. And uh, the Torx bit is, it fits the screws that are six point stars in most knives. 
just about every Kershaw knife has them, except for some of the older models, apparently. But I've got to constantly tighten the uh, screws in here. It's pretty funny how cheap it is. But anyway, um, I really can't show you much of my moves. I'm really not that good with it anyway, but I'm using a laptop fixed camera uh, that's built into the, my laptop for these videos. But if you want to learn some balisong moves, go to Cutlery Lover. He's a, a YouTube guy, and he's got a lot of videos on YouTube, and uh, just knife reviews and weapons reviews and that sort of thing. Um, and he's got some great balisong tutorials. He breaks it down for you real slow, and he's very safety conscious, which is great. Um, <laughs> the first few days I had this, I mean, I, I could have just painted the walls red with all the blood from all the cuts in my hand. I had uh, band-aids on every finger, on my palms. I had like pinpricks everywhere, all over my palms from doing aerials and catching the blade like this. Um, a lot of little slices, a lot of little uh, pinpricks on my knuckles from flipping it backwards and hitting the serrations on my knuckles. Um, my index finger knuckle is like constantly purple because of uh, you know popping it too hard or something like that. And that dot right there, I don't know if you can see that, is still like a scar or a scab from um, like flipping it and landing it right on my knuckle. Straight down. It really hurt. Uh, but anyway, just some, <laughs> uh, on that note, safety tips for Balasong. If you've got painter's tape, tape the blade up the first few days you get it, the first week you get it even. Because um, it doesn't leave the residue, but if you tape like one layer, it, it's uh, good enough to take the edge off and it'll still fit within the handles. Um, and wear shoes or boots or the thickest shoes you've got. Don't wear bare feet socks or flip-flops or anything, because if you drop it on your foot, it's going to suck, trust me. Um, but once you get used to it, you know, you can do some tricks with it without having to tape it up. Um, I can do a few tricks with it, and I just flipped it, spun around my hand, and uh, I wonder if I can do it as low. Let's see. There we go. Cutlery Lover taught me that one. Um, Essentially, I think it's called like the Y2K rollover or something, where I hold it upside down and flick it over my thumb and catch it like that. Flick it back up. But anyway, um, it's just a neat little knife. Just if you can pick up a cheap balisong, go for it. I just don't expect it to last long. Um, I'm just hoping tomorrow to go back and uh, get some quality, uh, quality balisong. Maybe you can get like a cold steel tie light or uh, you know those FGX series I was thinking of. But anyway, um, you know, it's a T tool that I mentioned before, about 13 bucks online, shipping and everything. Very very handy to have if you've got any kind of pocket knife with a torque fit. But anyway, um, yeah, if you've got any comments or questions or anything like that, uh, you know, just you know where to put them down there, and. Uh, yeah, once again, this is a Super Knife Balisong, or Butterfly, depending on what your preference is. And I'm Crispy990. Peace.